The so-called yellow vest protests that have sprung up in France in recent weeks now involve a variety of domestic policy issues. But they were triggered by a new tax on fuel prices. French residents from the less prosperous countryside, where driving an automobile is required, took to the streets to protest yet one more burden placed on them to please French and European politicians. The protests have been so vehement that the French government has already decided to scrap the tax for the time being. Hello, this is Ryan McMakin, and you're listening to Radio Rothbard. Some news outlets have taken to calling the protests cost-of-living protests, reflecting wider discontent over rising prices. Moreover, the unemployment rate in France has ranged from 9% to 10% over most of the past decade. According to the Institut Economique Molinari, the tax burden on typical workers in France is higher in France than anywhere else in Europe. Although discontent with this situation has apparently caught French President Emmanuel Macron and other politicians off guard, it shouldn't be a surprise that yet another bump to France's high cost of living has ignited protests. This latest tax is in the name of climate change policy, and climate change policy has always been largely about forcing people to consume less by raising the cost of living. Behind the climate change policy schemes, which are usually a form of emissions reduction policy, the central idea is to get people to either consume less of the wrong type of energy or to consume less energy overall. The two ways this is most commonly done is by subsidizing and promoting low emissions forms of energy and by straight up taxing energy consumption. The promotion of low emission energy is done through government regulations and through subsidies of low carbon energy sources. Both involve imposing high costs on ordinary people. They require tax revenue for the subsidies, while the regulations drive up the cost of producing goods and services. Meanwhile, carbon taxes drive up the cost of heating one's home, running one's business, or driving the kids to school. This sort of thing, of course, has never been much of a problem for the wealthy backers of these plans. They already live so far above subsistence levels and so far above the middle-class lifestyle that a few more taxes in the service of their ideological hobby horse strikes them as perfectly reasonable. To them, a carbon tax is little more than a small surcharge on the fuel necessary to jet off to yet another junket with politician friends or yet another vacation in a tropical land. For ordinary people, though, the cost of higher energy taxes are very real indeed, both in the rich countries and in the so-called developing world. This is why global warming rhetoric is more often than not apocalyptic in nature. Advocates know they're just pushing to drive up your cost of living, so they claim that if the voters and taxpayers don't give them what they want, all humanity will be destroyed. The stakes must be placed very high, or the ordinary workers struggling to afford a few more modest gifts at Christmas time are unlikely to play along. But that approach doesn't seem to be working at the moment. The promise of saving the world from a predicted climate apocalypse is apparently unconvincing to French workers and families who are worried about things going on right now. While the protest began as a tax protest, grievances expressed by protesters have now expanded to other areas. Thus, some observers will claim that the protests aren't really about a tax hike, but are just yet another attempt to get more government favors. This is no doubt true for some protesters. After all, some protesters are now openly demanding increases for their government salaries. But if that were the primary crux of the matter, then the government wouldn't have retreated so fast on the new energy taxes, and politicos wouldn't be pointing to planned tax cuts in 2019 as proof of their concern for the people of France. The proposed new energy tax, perceived by many as just the latest burden to be borne by French families with stagnating real wages, is a real reason to be upset. For many French households, the economy has reached a plateau, and the last thing they need is another tax. Unfortunately, it is highly unlikely that this discontent will extend to any meaningful critique of France's very state-centric policy regime, with its high taxes, numerous trade controls, and countless government regulations. It is this regime, after all, which has created the malaise that now plagues the overtaxed and often unemployed workers of France. But the fact that the climate change rationale has failed as a means of forcing a tax increase on the French population might be a wake-up call for various governments worldwide. It might be one thing if the global economy were catapulting the global middle classes to new heights of prosperity and financial independence. Taxpayers might then be quite a bit more amenable to a carbon tax or a new subsidy. But while economies and economic growth look great on paper, many households today continue to wonder where the real economic growth is. 
Thank you for listening to Radio Rothbard. Have a wonderful day. For more content like this, visit Mises.org.